Stayallday.com. You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Then we put all this together into one bundle, one package, one framework, one method, one philosophy, one approach, one way of living, one brand. We wrote a book on the topic, and you are listening to the Daily Masterclass, all are falling under one umbrella that is called Work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to move people out of your way. Now, before I even get into this, I want to let you know I have a text line where I want you to text me at any time during your listening to this episode or maybe later on today after you had a chance to really ingest what you've heard. I want you to text me and tell me the most valuable thing, the best insight, the most the best part that you got from this, basically the comments that since there are no comments in wherever you happen to be listening to this, unless you happen to be on YouTube, since there are no comments on podcasts, I want you to send me a text and tell me the most valuable thing you got from this masterclass episode. My number is 305-384-6894. Again, the link to my number is down below wherever you're listening to this. That's 305-384-6894. So to the topic, how to move people out of your way. I was on a run. I like to run outside. I run outside maybe three times a week most of the time. And I was on a run this past Saturday from whenever you're listening to this. And I remember I was on like the last part of my run. I was probably like a half a mile from the end of my run. It was maybe seven miles, seven plus miles that I was running. And there was this guy, he came around the corner. So I'm running on a, a straight line, a straight path. And this guy comes around the corner and makes a right hand turn and he sees me. And he makes his right hand turn so his back is to me. But he saw me coming and he sees that I'm running. And he starts walking on the sidewalk, like right in the middle of the sidewalk, right in the middle of my path. So he knows that he's in my way. And I don't know if this guy was having a bad day or maybe he was just blind and he couldn't see me. Or maybe he thought I was going to go around him or I don't know what the hell he was thinking. But he starts walking like literally right in my path. Now, I'm also I'm in the middle of my run. So I got a lot of kinetic energy going here. I'm already, you know, in, I'm already in my my zone because I'm in the run. And I'm, I told you I'm at the end of a seven mile run. And this dude starts walking in my path. So long story short, now I moved this individual out of my way. And we don't have to talk too much more about that. It wasn't a violent thing, but he did get moved out of the way. And the reason, and that led me to talking about what we're talking about here today. Now I'm not, I'm not talking, telling you to do this literally. I'm not telling you that you need to physically engage with other people. But when I had to move this guy out of my way for walking in my path, because he looked right at me, he saw me coming, and he walked in the path anyway. Again, I don't know what was going through his mind to have done that, but I do know how I responded to it. Today, I'm talking about metaphorically. How do you move obstacles out of your way? Whether that obstacle is a person, whether it is an idea, whether it's in whether it's something that you can't even describe what it is, but you know that there's some type of block. There is something in your way. How do you move those things out of your way? How do you engage the energy necessary, the mental toughness necessary, the the personal initiative necessary, just the, the audaciousness to move something out of your way that seems to be blocking you. Again, whether it is completely aware that it's blocking you, like this gentleman who just walked in front of me when I was running, or maybe it's something that something or someone that doesn't even know that they're in your way, but you know that they're in your way. How do you actually do this? Where do you begin? How do you start? How do you even get the mentality that you feel qualified and capable of actually doing it? And then how do you execute it and actually get it done? And maybe how do you deal with the aftermath as well? Because sometimes it may be some aftermath. So let's get into all of that here today. And again, send me a text at 305-384-6894. Tell me the most valuable thing that you got from today's episode. The topic, once again, how to move people out of your way. Number one, be bold and aggressive. Now, I talked about aggression. Many episodes of this show, I'm going to refer you to a few. So any of you who has any uh, negative connotations around a concept of aggression, or any of you who has been properly socialized by your friends and family and loved ones about not being aggressive, especially, uh, I would say, especially this is with females sometimes seem to be, especially in American culture, Western culture, seem to be socialized to not be aggressive. Females not supposed to be aggressive, whether verbally, you no, know, even mentally, emotionally, you're not supposed to be aggressive. In episode number 420, I told about, I talked about getting aggressive to make shit happen. 
Interrupting People's Patterns. That was episode 420. In episode 1223, the title is Be Aggressive, where I explain this very concept of aggression. Episode 742, if you're not going to be aggressive, get out of the way. And I talked about aggression in episode number 1408, aggression versus neediness and getting what you want. I want you all to understand the definition of this word aggressive because people seem to get it screwed up. So I'm going to make sure we're all on the same page here. I know what it means. The definition of aggressive is ready or likely to attack or confront characterized by or resulting from aggression. And this is actually not the best definition because they're using the word aggressive, aggressive and aggression in the definition, not really the way that it works. The definition of aggression that I used, I believe in episode 1223, is forcefully going after an objective or an aim. I don't know if that was the definition I'm looking up right now is a Google definition, but I think in the Merriam-Webster, they use def different definition. That's the one I'm giving you here. Forcefully going after what you want, whether that's a goal, an aim, and an object forcefully and directly going after things. That's what aggressive means. Now, I think anyone who's listening to this right now, if you think about your greatest accomplishments, some of your biggest, most proudest achievements, there are things that you went after forcefully and directly. You knew exactly what you wanted. You put force behind it. You put energy behind it. You put boldness behind it. And look at you. You went and made it happen. All right, is that? Do you think that's a magic formula? Or do you think that was luck? It's not luck. I guarantee you that. In episode number 909, I told you about giving yourself permission to make a bold move. If you're not willing to be bold in life, you're probably not going to get what you want in life. You should probably get comfortable settling for less than what you expect or less than what you say you want. You probably don't even expect it if you're not willing to be bold. Why am I telling you to be bold and aggressive to move people out of your way in life? We're here on point number one. The reason I'm telling you this is because num number one reason is the law of contrast. Most people are not and will never, most people aren't bold, they're not aggressive, and when you show that you're willing to be bold and aggressive, most of those people will never ever get in your way again. Most of those people won't even get in your way in the first place when they see that you're willing to be bold and aggressive and knowing that they are not, they know that they're not, and they see that you are, they're not even gonna bother coming in your vicinity because they know that their energy will not be able to compete with your energy. And remember what I've told you on so many episodes of this master class. People do not buy into what you do. They buy into who you are and who your energy, your boldness. That is part of the who you are. When you have the energy of being bold and aggressive, people can feel that. They can read it on you. They can see it in your eyes. They can see it in your energy. They can see it in you when you walk into a room before you have spoken or even if you never speak a single word, people can read that off of you. And that's how they decide about you, not based on what you say. We all spend so much time focusing on our words, but it's our energy that people actually buy into. When you are bold and aggressive, somebody can tell you're bold and aggressive and you don't even have to ever talk to them in your entire life. And they know they will move out of your way. Has any of you, again, all, everyone who's listening to me right now has been in a situation where you were in a bold and aggressive mood and things moved out of your way. People moved out of your way. You might not even have noticed because you had such tunnel vision in the moment. You didn't even notice the people moving out of your way. You didn't have to. They got the hell out of the way so that you didn't notice them because they didn't want to come in class with that energy. And all of you have seen someone who was in this frame of mind and you moved out of their way because you saw the energy that they had without them saying a word. You said, let me move out the way because I don't want to get in the path of wherever this person is going. I'm not blocking them because they seem to know exactly where they're going. And I don't want to I'm not going to get involved in that. All of us have seen this. All of us have been this person. When you carry yourself with the energy of knowing what you want and where you are going, most people will not get in your way, period. Plus, remember that fortune favors the bold. And fortune also frowns on the timid. Fortune will take from the timid and it gives to the bold. Many times in life, you will need to get aggressive to get what you want in life. And if what you want might mean somebody moving out of your way. You might need to get aggressive to move somebody out of your way because they may be aggressive too. So you might need to just take your energy up just a little bit higher than theirs and not higher than theirs to get them out of your way. Now, you might think that this is some, maybe you might think, well, that's just uh, some ego, egotistical, toxic masculinity talking thing. But listen, everybody who's listening to this right now has been in this situation where you were dealing with someone who was in your way in some way, shape or form, and they had a little bit of aggression to them. And if you were unwilling to be aggressive, you just had to not get what you wanted. You had to settle for less. And if you were able to get what you wanted, you had to be willing to get bold and aggressive to deal with that individual. And if you weren't willing to do that, you wouldn't have got what you wanted. Now, tell me I'm wrong. 
send me a text and tell me I'm wrong if you were able to make that situation work in any other way. Even, and I want y'all to understand something. When I say being bold and aggressive, it doesn't mean that you have to be confrontational with another person. You can be bold and aggressive and being nice to another person. You can be bold and aggressive and just dealing with somebody on their level, whatever that level happens to be. It doesn't mean you have to be a jerk. It doesn't mean you have to be a bitch. It doesn't mean you have to physically engage with another person. Bold and aggress- bold aggression can be in a nice way. It can be in a positive way, but it just needs to be direct. It needs to be clear. And you need to know exactly what you want. All right. None of those entail that you have to be negative. Now, you could choose to be negative. You don't have to be negative. So I want to make sure people understand that any of you who is, you know, again, if you've been properly socialized to never be bold or aggressive, understand it doesn't mean negative. You can do this in a positive way, but it does have to be intentional. That's the key word, not positive or negative, but the intentionality behind it. Point number two, today's topic, once again, is how to move people out of your way. Stop mincing words. What does it mean to mince words? It means when you have something to say to somebody, but instead of saying it directly and saying it in such a way that no one can misconstrue what you mean, you dance around the topic and you say it in a roundabout, nice way. You beat around the bush, as we say, because you don't want to get too direct with that person out of the fear that if you get too direct with the person that they will either be offended or maybe they will get aggressive with you. And then you don't want to deal with the emotional discomfort that comes with the subsequent exchange. That's why people mince words. People mince words because they don't want to deal with the emotional discomfort that they anticipate will come if they get too direct, too direct with other people. I see this happening all the time. I mean, all the time. And the more I use an app like Clubhouse or the more I and when I just deal with people in person, I see people mincing words all the time. I mean, too often. So much that I'm talking about it right now because I know so many people have this problem of not just saying exactly what they want to say. And again, this is not about you being a jerk to other people. It's not about you being a dick. It's not about being a bitch to other people. It's just you making sure that they know where you stand and you know where they stand and everybody being clear on exactly what is going on. The best leaders out there, all of you think of the best leaders that you have worked with or worked under or have been willing to follow. They are all really clear communicators. A clear communicator does not mince words. They let you know exactly what's going on in as few words as possible. And everybody knows exactly where they stand and they know where everybody else stands. That's what a good leader does. A good leader must be a strong communicator. If you are one who is known to mince words or you just know yourself to be one to mince words, you are putting a limit on your possible leadership. There's a lid on your leadership because of your unwillingness to get clear and direct with people as to where you stand, where they stand and what you want. This is all a communication skill. There are so many people walking this planet right now, some who are listening to my voice at this exact moment, who have thoughts and ideas of things that you want or things that you want to say, but you never actually say or do them. I'm giving you the the impetus right now. I'm giving you the directive, the permission to stop holding yourself back. And there are a few reasons why I'm giving you this. First of all, every gain every time that you don't say what you want to say every time you hold yourself that is a loss of who you actually are every time you don't really say what you really want to say every time you mince words you're holding yourself back a little bit and even if nobody else knows that you're doing it you know that you're doing it you got to look yourself in the mirror knowing that you did it you have to deal with for as many times as you think about it moving forward Damn, I know what I wanted to say there, but I didn't actually say it. I know what I want, what I wanted to get across to that audience of people or to this one person I was talking to, but I didn't actually get it across because I kind of held myself back a little bit because I maybe you didn't want to offend that person. Everyone who's listening to me right now has been in this situation and every one of us has been guilty of it at least once. When you go halfway with a half heart, first of all, people don't get your point. Because you didn't actually say it. So they don't really know what you mean because you didn't you didn't say it. You minced words. You chopped it up and you said it in such a a safe roundabout way that many people didn't even get it. You went over their heads with all the, the, the corporate speak. And another reason why when you go halfway with a half heart, another result rather of going halfway with a half heart is, you know, that you're doing it and it doesn't feel good. Because you got to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day, knowing that you didn't say what you actually wanted to say. And now you're feeling like shit because you just blew that opportunity. 
How many times has that happened to you? Maybe it just happened to you again recently. Maybe you're thinking right now of some past situations in which you were guilty of this exact thing that I'm explaining. Let me ask you a question, a rhetorical question. Are you ready to stop having that problem? Because if you are, you need to text me and let me know again at 305-384-6894. Point number three, today's topic once again is how to move people out of your way. I want you to remember that you're on the clock. We talked about this in the episodes where I talked about urgency, where I talked about uh, moving as if you don't have time to waste because you don't. In episode number 408, the topic was a sense of urgency, how to develop this key success tool. Episode 1172, your lack of urgency is your biggest problem in life. You are on the clock. Everybody who's listening to me right now, there is an hourglass of time that we call life. At the bottom is the sand that has already elapsed. This is also known as your age. At the top is the sand that is yet to elapse. This is how much time you have left in your life. The thing is, we know exactly what's on the bottom. None of us knows what's on the top. Unless you have a, a terminal illness and the doctor told you. And oftentimes they're wrong about that. So you don't know how much time you have left. So therefore, you need to start living as if you actually are conscious of this idea. You're conscious of this truth. Right, this, is a, this is a factual thing. Right, this is not a, this is, I, can, I call it an idea. It's not an idea. It's a fact. You don't know how much time you have left, but there is a finite amount of it. At least as far as the science that we have as of today, I'm recording this in 2021. As of today, we don't know how much time we have left. None of us knows how much time we have to live. Therefore, you need to start living like that. Live like, hey, I don't know how much time I got here, so let me not keep, let me not continually put things off. Let me not continually beat around the bush. Let me not continually delay things because, well, hey, maybe I'll say it next time. Maybe in the time after that. Maybe when I finally get around to it. Maybe if I don't say anything, just ignore it. Maybe it'll just go away. All right, you know that shit doesn't work. Now, how many times are you going to keep telling yourself that? How many times are you going to keep rationalizing the same things that you keep doing over and over again? around this concept of confronting and addressing situations directly. Remember that you're on the clock. Time will continue to move, whether you get aggressive and bold about your life and business or you don't, time's gonna keep moving either way. The only one who will lose in the end if you don't make this decision to get bold and aggressive and direct and clear about your life is you because you're gonna take the value, the things that you wanted to say but never actually said, you're gonna take them to that really valuable real estate that they call the graveyard just build on the value of that graveyard, but you won't be able to benefit from it. And neither will your kids. Time is moving, whether you get aggressive or not. Time does not care what you do, in case you thought it did. Time doesn't care whether you use this time and do something with it or you do nothing with it. It does not care. It's going to move regardless of what you do or don't do. But you should care. Opportunity is impatient. If you don't move yourself or others in order to get to that opportunity, often what happens is you just lose out on it. Now, the opportunity is not going to come beat you upside the head. It's not going to knock on the door again. You know, somebody's at your door and you, they knock, you don't answer and then they knock again because they're just getting impatient. They're waiting for you to open the door. Opportunity doesn't do that. All right. If you don't show up and take advantage of the opportunity, it just moves on to the next person. Or better yet, the next person sees that opportunity, just takes it off your doorstep while it was waiting for you to come answer the door. That's how it works. Remember that opportunity is impatient. If you don't grab it, somebody else is going to grab it. And every time you hesitate, every time you hold back, every time you mince words, every time you don't say something, every time you allow something to be in your way and do not get proactive in moving it out of your way, you are costing yourself an opportunity. You are maiming yourself and you're taking yourself one step closer to increasing the value of the most valuable real estate on earth because you just used up a little bit more grains of sand in your life and didn't do anything with it. How does that make you feel? Recap in today's class, which is how to move people out of your way. Point number one, be bold and aggressive. I have many topics, many chapters, many episodes, master classes on being bold and aggressive in life. Talk about it in the mirror motivation, also in 100 Mental Game, best practices. You can get both of those books as part of the Bulletproof Bundle. When you claim your copy of the Mirror Motivation, just check the box. You can get all four books. But why do I tell you to be bold and aggressive? Because most people are not bold nor aggressive, and they will never get in your way or get in your way again when they realize that you are bold and aggressive. When you carry yourself with the energy 
of knowing what you want and where you are going, most people will either not get in your way in the first place or if they are, they will move the hell out of your way. Point number two, stop mincing words with people. Mincing words means dancing around a topic and saying it but not really saying it so people don't really know where you stand and they never actually get the point of what you're trying to tell them. A lot of people have thoughts and ideas of what they want to say but never do or say them. They're holding themselves back and you know you're doing it and it doesn't make you feel good every time that you do it. You're beating yourself up a little bit more every time you hold back. Number three, remember that you're on the clock. Time is moving and it doesn't care whether you use it or not. It is going to continue to move. But you should care about the time. Time doesn't care about you, but you should care about time because opportunity is impatient. If you don't move yourself or others in order to get to that opportunity, often you just lose out on it. And many times you don't even know that it was there. Now, again, send me a text 305-384-6894. Tell me the most valuable thing you got from today's episode and work on your game. Dre all day.